get it started. And uh, the first topic is what can the building of the future actually do? And for this, we'd like to switch over to our colleagues in Zug in Switzerland. And there we greet John Lester. John, great to have you with us. Pleasure to be here, Chris. Thank you very much. So, uh, Chris mentioned a topic there, smart buildings. Uh, and what does this actually mean? What we see as the main difference between the buildings of the past and the buildings that we have today as smart buildings is that smart buildings are able to interact, learn and adapt by connecting people with technology and environments. This means that buildings are moving away from being a a passive asset that gives us the ability to do our business every day and actually becoming active contributors to the business success of the stakeholders in that building. And that's what we'll discuss a little bit over the next few minutes because buildings are starting to become uh, active environments and they're starting to have a huge impact on the users and the stakeholders of the building and their daily lives. So let's look in a little bit more detail into this history, this evolution that we've seen in our industry. And if you look on the left, you see the traditional building, which I mentioned before. This was a, a passive asset, not very flexible, uh, sometimes expensive, and really just functioned as a place to put all the things you needed to do your daily business or go through your daily lives. So a roof, walls, windows, uh, something to protect the assets that you had. And the next step in that evolution was the automated building. And this was really the birth of the building management system as we know it today. And we started to get the ability to sense what was happening within the rooms and the spaces within the building, uh, to use that information to make decisions and make uh, changes to how we operated that building, and also start to connect between all the different systems. So make a vision on some of the different operational technologies, fire safety, security, uh, building automation, room automation, and start to get a little bit of a picture about what is happening across the building in different parts. And then we're to this new era where we are today, the era of the smart building. And what we're really able to do is expand this transparency. And this is driven by our ability to connect. We're now able to connect more effectively and more deeply into these different systems and technologies and with the different users within the building to be able to collect more information and expand this transparency. So now we really understand what's happening everywhere within the building and we can use this information to really start to change the decisions and make more effective impacts on the way that these buildings are managed. And it's important to note that this doesn't stop just within the physical shell of the building. We're really starting to leverage information that comes from outside the building as well including uh, weather conditions, it could be our energy supply systems, all of this different information which enables us to do all the different things that we look to do to try and actively commit and uh, positively impact the business success of the users within that building. Now we do see already today uh, the next evolution in our industry, the smart uh, self-adaptive building. Uh, this is, like, takes all of the skills that a smart building is capable of doing and really takes it to that next step where it starts to make active, proactive decisions and takes mitigating actions to take away some of the risk when it comes to, uh, to operation without really needing the integration and the input from the operating uh, people. So this is a huge step again, but today our smart buildings are really the, the next evolution that we're looking at to go forward. Now, I mentioned very quickly the different stakeholders for a building, and every building has many different stakeholders, whether this is the owner, the operators, the tenants, or the daily users and visitors within a building. All these different stakeholders have different goals, uh, whether they're business goals or personal goals, and to, to effectively achieve those goals, each one of these stakeholders need different situations within their building. They have different requirements. And this is where our industry has really taken a step forward. We're now able to better understand the requirements of these individual stakeholders. And with the power of smart buildings, are able to start to deliver the environments that they require to give this active input to really become contributors to the success of these individual stakeholders. So this ability to interact with the users, with the different systems inside and outside the building, to learn from these interactions, collect this data and start to leverage it more effectively, and then adapt what we deliver as far as an environment goes to these individual users so we can actively contribute to that success. Uh, to, to have a little bit of a look at an example, uh, let's pick one of our key users. And today we'd like to talk about the user of the building. So one of the key stakeholders. And the user of a smart building 
is, uh, is often one of the key stakeholders. And this is really one of the stakeholders that we as an industry have really improved our ability to understand in the recent future. With the advent of smartphones and applications on those smartphones, we have more opportunities for users to be able to give their own input on how they'd like the building around them to start to work and operate and function for them. And here on the screen, you see a map of a lot of different interactions that we would call a day in the life of a smart building user. And at every point along this day in the life, there are different interactions where we do make this connection be between people and technologies, and then make this connection to the environments that we deliver to them. And at every one of those interactions, there's an opportunity for us to find value and benefits. So whether it's uh, getting seamless access to the building, finding a colleague or finding a meeting room which is available. Uh, once you get into that meeting room, having the personalized settings set so that you have the right temperature, the right, right light levels, so you can be as effective as possible within your daily operation. These are all different situations where we can start to give positive impact to the, the user of this smart building. So let's pick just one simple example. Uh, on the first two, the very start of a building user's day, if they're going to work in a smart building on a daily basis, we have a technology called the Surveillance Access Mobile. And with this technology, with this application, a smart building user is able to reserve a parking spot gain access to the parking garage and get directed to where their parking spot is, and then get seamless access also to the building. So this really relatively simple interaction, but a daily interaction can absolutely be improved uh, using the power of the smart building and the integrated and connected systems within them. And just so you know, an average motorist spends about two complete days a year searching for a parking spot. So if we're able to find a few minutes, a small amount of time every day, or we take away some stress and some use of energy for those building users to deliver additional value and they can start to use this time more effectively, this is a huge impact across the life of a year and a lifetime of a building user. And this is a great opportunity at every one of these touch points to find these small benefits, but sometimes large benefits to continue to improve the use of a smart building to bring this business continuity. And it's a, it's a really special set for us if we can achieve that as possible. Now, one of the last points I'd like to touch on today is how a smart building sits within its surroundings, because a smart building absolutely does not exist in isolation. A smart building is part of a far broader smart infrastructure around it. And this can include uh, the energy systems, the smart grids, which includes uh, different energy generation and distribution. Uh, it can involve some of the grid edge technologies like e-mobility infrastructure and distributed energy generation. All of these different technologies start to become part of the interaction that a smart building is capable of delivering. And this is a really important thing to note as well, because for operators and owners of a building, there's a chance that these different systems also have a big impact on their ability to op operate their building successfully and on the building's ability to deliver this business uh, effectiveness and this, uh, this positive impact on the daily life of the user. And let's take uh, e-mobility as a as an example. So e-mobility is something that we see absolutely growing within our society and it will continue to grow. And sometimes it's even housed within the smart building, but it changes the role that a smart building may have in the smart infrastructure around it. And it gives us the ability to start to look at different aspects of the operation and the function of this building. A building could become a prosumer to generate electricity, to store electricity, and to start picking some of these different details to change the business model and change the approach as an operator of that building to continue to deliver this structure and this ability to, uh, to bring positive benefit to the users of these buildings. So in very quick introduction, this is what smart buildings uh, are, are capable of doing. They're really taking this, this uh, automated building concept to the next level, enabling that interaction, the learning and adapting, uh, and the connection between people, technology, and environment so that we're able to be active contributors to the business and personal success of the users of that building. Thank you very much. Back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, John. Um, you, stick Robert. around for, for a few more moments because uh, we, have some, some yeah, we have some, um, some interesting questions coming in here. First Absolutely. one would be from your point of view, what is the biggest challenge for smart buildings? Yeah, there, there's obviously whenever there's a change like this in the industry, there's some challenges. But one of the biggest things we see from an industry is that things are moving so quickly. Uh, traditionally, the construction industry is not a fast moving one. 
But now as technology becomes more capable and more accessible, things move very, very quickly. And the, the decisions that we make today may be different tomorrow and the year after. So this is absolutely a challenge for us as an industry uh, and for us as, as product uh, and solution and service providers to stay at the very forefront of what technology is capable of and make sure that we're able to be flexible uh, and bring this information and this capability into as many buildings as possible around the world. All right. Next question, um, what if you have, for example, a 20-year-old building and you want to have a smart building? Can you do that or do you have to build a totally new one? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, absolutely not do you have to build something new. Uh, almost every building that exists today can be a smart building. One of the beauties of this, this technology, which is enabling smart buildings, this connectivity, whether it's edge-connected devices, cloud-connected devices, or IoT, we can absolutely leverage the existing systems within existing buildings. We can absolutely take the information that they provide uh, and connect them uh, and start to make better decisions and more informed decisions with that information. And if we need to, to put additional systems or so, some additional capability within that building, things like these IoT devices are so much easier and faster uh, and more powerful and easy to deploy. So we can easily make this work uh, in existing buildings, small, medium, large, uh, and also for the new buildings uh, of tomorrow. Sounds good. Thank you very much, John. And uh, I think I'm going to see you again in just a couple of moments. But thank you for the information so far.